Hi, everyone. To begin with this afternoon, Health Commissioner Eric Szyzynski is not able to join us today. He was called away to respond to some COVID-19 related epidemiology issues this afternoon. And so he won't be here and he won't be able to respond uh, to any questions this afternoon. So you'll receive the latest case data in a press release just as you do every afternoon coming up in just a little bit. Also, I know Governor DeWine announced today that the Seagate Center in downtown Toledo would be the site of the ACF or the alternate care facility in Lucas County. So media, you will be receiving a news release on this later this afternoon from the Coordinated Healthcare Joint Information Center. This is their information to share. I can't answer any questions about that today, but you will be receiving further information on it in just a little bit from them. We know that COVID-19 is affecting our physical and mental health. It's also affecting the health of our economy with many people out of work, lots of businesses shut down during the crisis, but there is help and assistance available. And I know people are wondering, where can I find it? So here to talk about the response and the resources available in Lucas County, we have Brandon Selhorst, who is the Commissioner of Economic and Business Development for the City of Toledo, as well as Tanya Saunders, the Director of the Lucas County Department of Planning and Development. I wanna thank you both for being here today and answering these questions. This is a rough time for a lot of people, a lot of business owners, a lot of business workers. Uh, Brandon, maybe you can just uh, start if you would and just give us kind of the, the big picture of what's going on in, in Toledo. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris, and thanks for having um, us on today. Um, this is an opportunity that um, we're grateful for to share the message on how businesses can get assistance. Um, just to kind of talk about high level, to take a step back for a minute, um, you know, over the past five years, the Toledo region has been experiencing an economic boom. Um, Site Selection Magazine, which is really the holy grail of the economic development industry, has ranked our community as a top 10 mid-sized metro for economic development for the past five years. So I start out with that to say that we have had a lot of economic development momentum in this community for the past several years. Um, that is still, it's still there, it's still going strong, right? Those projects that have been publicly announced are still moving forward through our process. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to report projects like the Amazon delivery station at Southwick that we recently announced um, is moving forward. Um, we're working with Cliffs in East Toledo to start construction back up on that project. Um, but some pretty big announcements have been made in our community that have resulted in thousands of new jobs, not to even count the construction jobs associated with that. Um, and so we are doing everything in our power at the city and in this community to continue to push those projects forward. However, it is not lost on us that um, other projects or other businesses aren't moving forward. There's a real need for assistance in our community um, and it really comes down to liquidity, right? Cash is king and these businesses need resources and they need it fast. Um, and so there are various resources um, at different tiers of government that um, businesses should be aware of. And Chris, um, let me know if this is the opportunity to kind of run through those resources now, um, or if you want me to kind of wait. Yeah, I think, no, it's fine. I think that, um, you know, people are wondering where can they go? We did hear a huge announcement, uh, obviously about the um, federal response to what's happening now and federal dollars that are available and people can access those dollars, how, and what kind of money is that, Brandon? Sure, absolutely. Well, really, um, one thing that we want to be very mindful of is being very transparent and streamlining the information. And so the economic development partners in the Toledo region uh, teamed up with the Toledo Regional Chamber of Commerce to act as the repository for all of that information. So if you go to toledochamber.com, um, that will act as the, um, as the information um, source for a lot of these resources that I'm going to be talking about here in a second. Um, this is also a resource that you can sign up um, to have a listserv, so you will receive updates as they become available for a number of these programs. Um, and you do not have to be a chamber member to receive the benefit 
of these um, resources or of these emails. So I want to stress that we are trying to recommend to all businesses to go there and sign up um, so that we can push out the latest information to you through that uh, mechanism. As I just mentioned, um, there are various resources depending on what tier of government um, we're talking about. And so I'll start out by talking about the federal government um, who recently enacted the CARES Act that provided um, stimulus resources to the Small Business Administration. And they did that in uh, primarily two programs. The first is called a Paycheck Protection Program in which uh, Congress authorized $350 billion um, towards that program. This is a loan that can be obtained through a private lender. So you would go to your certified SBA lender, whether that's through your bank or credit union, to obtain this loan, which is 100% backed by the SBA. You can also um, receive a loan up to 250% of the average monthly payroll cost over the past 12 months for your business, up to $10 million. There is a portion of this loan that can be forgiven if businesses spend it on payroll for their existing employees to keep them on payroll or to rehire um, the employees that they unfortunately had to lay off by that June 30th. Um, that is one of two programs. Do you have to be a certain size of it? Do you have to be a certain size business to be able to access those, that program? Brandon? You do. Um, I believe it, it follows the SBA's guidelines. I believe it's less than 500 um, employees okay. that would qualify. It's either 500 or 250. Um, but more information on the specifics of that program and how to apply is available on the Chamber website. Okay, good. The second uh, program through the SBA is what's called an Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, and Congress appropriated $10 billion for this program, which is directly through the SBA. Um, so uh, businesses can log on to the Toledo Chamber website and get more information about this loan, which can provide assistance up to $2 million and a $10,000 grant. So that would be an immediate cash injection um, that companies could apply for and receive. Um, we are recommending, if, if you're not sure whether or not you know, this makes sense for your business to please reach out to the Small Business Development Center through the chamber. Again, you do not have to be a chamber member to, um, to benefit from, from their guidance. Um, and it's completely free of charge to, to have their assistance. So um, ToledoChamber.com is really where you can receive more information about these resources at the federal government level. Okay, and there also are some state programs that you have uh, available to folks as well, right? And, and can you combine these federal and state dollars? Um, so at the state level, it's more um, resources that are more so related to information, I guess, at this point. Um, Jobs Ohio, which is the economic development entity for the state of Ohio, um, did um, a variety of things. First, they teamed up with the Ohio Manufacturing Association to create a statewide database for manufacturers, distributors, and suppliers of personal protective equipment. Uh, this, is, this is great because this creates a centralized database for all of those um, companies that wish to either say, hey, I'm here, I'm, I have resources, I can provide it, and for um, available businesses who need those PPE um, to log on and, and, and reach out to those companies directly. That information can be found at jobsohio.com um, in terms of that database and how to sign up for that. That is completely statewide. Um, the second thing that Jobs Ohio um, did is they are um, working with their businesses that they have provided financial assistance to in the past to provide various relief programs through their loans, grants, and tax credits that they have um, issued in the past. This is specific to only companies that have received assistance from Jobs Ohio um, or are currently receiving assistance. The last um, program through the state of Ohio is related to uh, companies that need workers and they need them fast. And for existing job seekers and they, you know, they need 
to work now. Um, if you go to www.coronavirus.oh.gov backslash job search, this is a matchmaker.com for companies that need employees through the coronavirus um, you know, pandemic right now that are actively working companies, people that are actively looking for jobs. This is a, a resource at the state level that can provide um, kind of those matchmaking services so people can get to work and companies can get the employees that they need. Okay, and Tanya, you are seeing a lot of employers that are saying to you, we need workers. Do you have a workforce for us? And you are helping to try to do some of that matching yourself, right? Absolutely. Um, so from a local standpoint, um, to Brandon's point, that's exactly what we're trying to do here in the county and really regionally is trying to identify the immediate needs of our local businesses, essential businesses, and trying to connect the job seekers here uh, to those opportunities. Um, one of the things that we've really been trying to focus more so on as we are being inundated with the um, number of people applying for unemployment, um, even though from a local standpoint, we don't have all of the answers and the ability to navigate people as fast through that system as we would like to, we are also kind of directing them in the areas of getting them connected to these jobs, letting them know that these jobs are available, letting them know that the, the local employers are offering um, premium hourly wages. Uh, so, you know, for a typical job, just stocking shelves that would normally pay maybe 10 to $12 an hour is paying $18 an hour to start right now. And so uh, we have a dual role here in not only just serving our local essential businesses, but providing those opportunities to our job seekers that are needing answers and needing assistance right away and really want to get out there and work. And you have uh, several industries that are really looking for people right now. I mean, you can start work tomorrow if you get in there and, and they have a job for you, right? Yes. I mean, some of the grocery stores you might be able to start yet today, uh, starting some of the night shifts. But, um, you know, healthcare is really big and um, CDL drivers is, is very highly needed right now because they're obviously deemed as essential. Um, and we also have training dollars that's attached to helping someone to not have to worry about paying for going through the process to obtain their CDL license. And we have ex expedited that process um, and we have been able to administer that uh, uh, the training dollars virtually to get people on the fast track to be able to obtain that certification so they can be available for those CDL jobs that's available. And um, grocery, cleaning, there are a lot of industries right now that really need people um, right away. You also, though, Tanya, have a program for employers who might be struggling right now. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so in, in addition to what Brandon mentioned from the state, we uh, the county also um, is administered dollars locally here to be able to provide what's called layoff aversion assistance to employers. So if an employer um, is, you know, making some six month out projections and feeling that, you know, those projects projections are revealing that they may be subject to a layoff, we really want to talk to them. There are some provisions that we can make and some funding to hopefully try to help steer away from um, a potential layoff of a business here in our county or in the regional area. Um, and in addition, we also have what's called on the job training dollars that's not only available to help uh, businesses, but to also help job seekers um, that will basically play, pay um, a reimbursement to employers to be able to provide the on the job training. Um, it could be an existing um, employee and they're going into a new field uh, within their company or it can be a brand new job. Um, so those are some of the things that we have um, access to right now locally here. Uh, these are the services that we've been providing uh, businesses all, all prior to COVID-19. 
And I know you guys are working virtually, but you are still able to connect with people, help them with some of those things. And I guess the point of the matter is, if you are out of work right now and you're not able to work, that they would be able to take advantage of these training programs with you so that when um, things start to um, emerge better after the crisis, that they would be prepared. Now we're very proud. We have a work ready uh, force here in uh, Lucas County. And so great place to be and to have that training available for folks. Absolutely. That's another point of what we're trying to do locally here as we may not have all the answers and the ability to expedite uh, those that are trying to obtain the unemployment benefits, but something that we do have on a brighter side is to provide that one-on-one -on -one assistance virtually to those individuals um, that really need to work on upskilling because, as Brandon mentioned, um, development is still happening, and we have a tremendous amount of jobs that we have to fill. Um, that's usually the number one question when a business is, you know, going through site selection is, what does your workforce look like? And we've been very fortunate um, through the leaders of our county commissioners and our workforce development board to be deemed as a work ready community and then that we can demonstrate that we do have a work ready uh, workforce but for those that are that may have been delayed in that process because maybe they were balancing a job or they were balancing some other things and could not finish that process we are really staring them in the direction to say this is the opportunity as things are put on pause a little bit to redirect in helping to upskill your ability so when we get over this and we flatten this curve and we can go back to business as usual you're going to be ready to go and fill those jobs because the needs are gonna far exceed what they were prior to COVID-19. You have also been helping people who are trying to get through on those unemployment lines and make sure that they can take advantage of those unemployment dollars right now, uh, folks who are out of work, Tanya. And, and people are calling at all hours of the day and getting busy signals and not able to get through. What are your recommendations for people? How are you helping folks with that? We're really trying to steer them towards, you know, some of the better times to call the call center, um, better times to visit the website. Uh, the website is available um, pretty much any time, uh, but we're also taking phone calls to kind of walk people through that process as everyone, you know, it's an extreme amount of people that have never ever had to do this before. So every aspect of this is brand new for them. Um, so we're just really trying to serve as um, an encourage encourage them to keep trying and we are facing some challenges in the sense of we have a twofold need here we have a need that employers need workers immediately for those essential jobs we're also trying to meet the needs of the job seekers that are finding themselves without wages right now and trying to present every opportunity to help them to stabilize their family and you know to continue to live on through this crisis we're in and so in doing so we're trying to be strategic on both sides to say hey there's some opportunities here right now that you can take advantage of if that's something that you are in a position to do however we will continue to work with you uh, virtually if someone needs to obtain their GED, that is gonna be very important to make sure that you pursue and finish that uh, because as these jobs begin to open up again, those are gonna be critical factors when you see the volumes of people coming looking for the same job, how are you gonna stand out? And acquiring our uh, work ready, uh, National Career Readiness Certificate, those are the measures that's gonna set you out and, and stand you out from the crowd of people that's gonna be going after the same jobs. Kind of to your point there, Jay Hanna from NBC24 is asking with the added benefits to unemployment, how do you motivate those workers to go help out the understaffed places like grocery stores, cleaning crews, those types of things? So it's really on a case by case scenario. And you know, because there, there's a lot of factors we have to consider here. There are some people that um, it's safer for them to stay home and, and not put themselves um, in further exposure to this, even though those essential businesses are operating all of the practices to ensure the safety of their workers. Uh, but it is uh, on a, a 
individual's bases and for those that are wanting something right now and, and there are many people out there that's ready to get out there and and work we're offering we're trying to streamline that process to get them directly connected to the to the employers that's willing and that that want them to get started right away landscaping is another one you know uh, i think mm -hmm. one of our landscaping uh, owners said to us you know COVID-19 did not stop the grass from growing. So those opportunities are right now and we need to get people equipped and ready for those opportunities. And I think a lot of people kind of put, put themselves in a compartment and everyone is focused on unemployment and how do I get unemployment when there are opportunities right here that can really stabilize your, your family and, and be able to help you to, to live day to day. Another area that seems to be uh, still booming in a lot of ways is the construction area. And uh, Brandon, you were talking about, um, you're still open for business in that arena, right? You're still giving permits and um, doing inspections and all of that. Absolutely, you know, that, that's one of the factors we can control through this whole process. Uh, the city of Toledo is, is open for business. We are moving to virtual public meetings for plan commission, in Toledo Council, City Council, and a number of the committees that are associated with that to ensure that projects continue to move forward. Um, you know, what a lot of folks don't realize is that if, if these um, projects don't receive the approvals at these meetings, then they can't begin construction. Um, and so it was critically important for us to move quickly, get these meetings online so that these companies can get the approvals that they need over this next month or two um, so that they can start construction you know as soon as this is over and um you know, and before the you know end of the construction season so projects like amazon um you know the colony project uh, glass city metro park um, these are all huge projects um, for our community that we're doing everything that we can at the city to push them forward. Um, so Chris, you also mentioned um, permitting. Um, you know, that is another critically important part of the development process. Uh, the city of Toledo's division of building inspection is open Monday through Thursday from 9.30 to three o'clock. And um, folks that are looking to apply for permits, pay, uh, make a payment, or schedule an inspection can go on to the city's website via the permit online portal, which is shown there on the screen. Um, that is critically important, um, I think, to continue to um, push these projects forward. Um, it's also important to note that construction drawings and plans can be mailed into the city of Toledo's division of building inspection um, at the address shown there on the screen. So we are still reviewing plans. Um, that process has not stopped. And um, you know that's something that's really important, I think, to our construction partners to move these projects forward. Yeah, and to make sure that things are continuing to move ahead so that when we come out of this and people are back to work that you know things are, are moving forward. And Tanya, the county also has, um, uh, a plan in place for this as well. You're allowing people to do the same thing. Correct. Yeah, uh, pretty similar to what the city's doing. Um, the operations for Lucas County building regulations um, are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And um, customers can access services at the uh, email that's that's listed on the PowerPoint here. Uh, we did do something a little bit different by creating a walk-up service for completed plans um, so that the customers will have the opportunity to, to pick those um, plans up. Uh, so we really wanted to make sure we were responsible as we are continuing to keep these services available to our customers, but also ensure that we're still practicing all of the um, social distancing and being able to provide those services at the same time. Right. Okay, uh, Renata uh, from WTOL is asking, do you have any advice for immunocompromised workers who are still going to work and might be scared? We often get questions on how they should approach this subject with their employers. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty much a mandate in, in the practicing and, you know, I know there's been a lot of development in terms of the provisions of, of having the mask and gloves and um, providing that for employers. So I would highly recommend 
um, for those that are still continuing the essential workers is, is to ask for those resources. If the employer does not have those resources there, we have outlets here. We have a, a donation center, Lucas County, and this is all coordinated through our combined efforts with the city of Toledo uh, is to contact us so that we can make those provisions and see how we can connect them to, to acquire what is needed. And I would just add to that, you know, this is going to be a conversation that we're going to continue to have. You know, when businesses are allowed to reopen, uh, those concerns are still going to be there. And those um, socially, um, socially appropriate distancing and, and sanitation, those are all going to be conversations that we're going to have to have um, as, as these businesses reopen. So um, I, I would say, you know, to recommend to folks like that to, you know, be encouraged that um, this isn't lost on the employer and let's just have upfront conversations about what, what your concerns are and how we can, how we can address those. And uh, Brandon, what do you want people to know right now who are sitting at home? You know, we've all been kind of cooped up at home for the last um, several weeks here and, and more weeks to come. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to know about what is happening in the city of Toledo economically and in our region? Yeah, I, I think it's important um, to echo my comments earlier, you know, that we are we are still, we still have economic development momentum, right? We have a lot of major projects that are currently either not publicly announced um, and soon will be hopefully that are currently um, going through the entitlement process and will begin construction or that are currently under construction. And we're doing everything with our economic development partners to ensure that continues to move forward. I would also like to make sure that everyone at home knows um, about the Chamber's resource, that their website acts as, you know, the single point of information for businesses looking for information or resources um, that may be available all over, um, not just specific to Toledo and not just specific to the state of Ohio. So I'd really like to encourage everyone to still remain optimistic. We have development momentum and, um, you know, this is an extremely exciting time for the city despite um, everything going on with COVID, with everything happening with downtown, Southwick officially being announced. I mean, there's some pretty exciting things going on and the optimism in our community, um, I think is, is, is very um, much looking forward to seeing those developments happen. And Tanya, what would you say to employers and employees who might be, you know, going through a tough time right now? Yeah, we are, so we've all been given something, you know, there's some downtime, some time to think, some time to really strategize and enact of the plan that we had. And so for businesses, you know, an opportunity that we can provide um, assistance to you and strategize with you on how you can, um, you know, really ride this storm out. And the same for job seekers. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to have the ability to up. Okay, we are losing her a little bit here. Um, so we'll give her a chance. Uh, everybody using their internet service this afternoon. Are sure. there any questions from our media uh, friends? If you have questions, you can put them in the chat or you can just let me know you'd like to ask a question and you will have the opportunity to ask uh, Tanya or Brandon a question here. Okay. Um, yeah, Michaela, there isn't, um, Eric is not here and there's no one to answer um, that question here today. Um, so I, we can't help you with that question regarding the nursing home. Um, here today, but if there are any questions related to business or um, in the city of Toledo or Lucas County, we're happy to take those. I want to thank you both, um, Brandon. I'm not seeing any further questions, so Brandon and um, Tanya, thank you so much for being with us, answering those questions. A lot of good information here, a lot of resources where people are able to reach out 
whether they are employers or employees who are looking for help, um, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call um, Ohio Means Jobs in Lucas County or to uh, reach out to the city and um, the Toledo Chamber as the clearinghouse for all of those great resources. Brandon, thank you. And Tanya, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Thank you, Chris.